Hey guys, so I did a video earlier today about you can't fool Satan and still stand on that. Um, but I also want to do one about how much God loves us. You know, there is no perfect person. God loves you. And this is really for those who have not, they're not saved or you're not sure. There's nothing that you have done that is so awful that God cannot forgive you and bring you back. The only thing that they talk about in the Bible that you cannot be forgiven for is blaspheming against the Holy Spirit. But God has come to save those who are lost. He is not here. God is not interested in anything really other than saving lost souls. Jesus loves you just as you are. Jesus loves you. He loved me. I don't want you to fall into the beliefs that you may have heard growing up. You are nothing. You are nobody. Maybe there are things that happened to you growing up in your childhood. Maybe your parents, loved ones, a close family member. Maybe things occurred that has caused you to be angry with God, to believe that you are not worthy of his love. But you have to realize that everybody, whether it's our parents, um, people, they, you know, they have their own strongholds and they have their own things that they are dealing with. But God knows you. God knows your name. God knows where you live. God knows you and you are special to him. A lot of times we have seen God, which I used to see him before, as just this great big, ex he just existed and God is God and that's it. I never looked at and thought God loves me. I never thought God cares about what goes on with me every day. I never thought that the very hairs of my head are numbered, that he knows me, that when a bird falls out of a nest, he's aware of that and he values me so much more over that. So I want you to understand that God loves you. You think of your most vile sin. You know, Paul in the Bible was a murderer. He went and he was just killing Christians and the Lord used him. And he used him for his glory. David was an adulterer and the Lord changed him. You have um, Jacob was a little liar. He lied all the time. So did Abraham, I think, if I remember in the stories. <laughs> You know, they were liars. They were not perfect, but they were used for his glory and his honor. God forgave the adulterous woman. They were getting ready to stone her. Funny enough, where is the guy that she was with, though? Where did he go? But he loves you. Whether it's church hurt anything that you've experienced right and a lot of people are like i don't want to be a part of no church some people are tripping i don't blame you for saying that because i am a christian and i see it too and it's like whoa but guess what that is no excuse everybody is not the same and at the same time what does that have to do with the lord get to know god for yourself a lot of people think that it's in works. They have to go into a church and they have to do this. I beseech you, wherever you're at, you get on your knees at home, at the bar, wherever you are, with crack cocaine in your hands, wherever you are, whatever you're experiencing, you know, relationship that you can't seem to get out of, you know, situation you can't seem to get out of, you don't know how you're going to do it, where you're going to do it. I want to introduce the Lord Jesus Christ to you. He will change your life. He can take you out of nothing and make you into something. And it's not about trying to be anything, but knowing that Jesus loves you. Jesus is not a fable. He is not a fairy tale. He's not a bedtime story. I'm telling you as a person that, ha that have experienced the very presence of God, who has experienced his mercy and his grace. He has saved me from a lot of things. I was sexually immoral like and how was I I was all up in that okay I was um very bad temper like I was really really calm I it wasn't like all the time but if you kept messing with me messing with me I would have reacted to you and then my mind would catch up so by the time I really realized that I've hit somebody or grabbed somebody I would have already acted out and it's like my mind 
we'll catch up afterwards. And what did that tell me? If I didn't get with God, I would have ended up committing murder at some point in my life. Because, not because I'm looking, but, you know, if I had a habit of hitting a person or being so angry that I black out and, and, and get you, then that's what I was doing. And I was doing this, you know, coming up. You know, thank God the Lord has delivered me from that. But that's how I was when I was younger. I was like, I was real quiet and I look real timid and real shy and I didn't mess with you. But if you kept messing with me and messing with me, I would black out and would done something to you. So what does that tell me? If I had kept on and kept doing that type of stuff, I would have, I would have murdered somebody. That's how you commit murder. It's a quick act. Um, I was a person, I was one of them friends that, you know, when something go down, you can call me and we gonna go take care of whatever needs to go down. All right. Um, I enjoyed drinking. Um, I wasn't like no functioning alcoholic. I wasn't like that, but you know what? I love the feeling of being nice. You know what I'm saying? I feel like, okay, I'm not drunk. I'm nice. There's a difference. And that's how the enemy would try to justify your sense. You ain't really doing nothing. You just nice, but I'm drunk though. You know, so my thing was I get a big thing of Long Island iced tea and be sipping, boom, boom, you know, and just nice. Um, I was just, I enjoyed hanging out, hanging out with my friends. I had great friends, good times, really. But at the end, I wasn't happy, you know. Um, but I knew how to sin real good. I knew how to sin really good, you know. And there's some people who've done worse than that. But you better look at the Christians, the people who are called. God has saved drug dealers. God has has saved um, um, people who who got to know him while they were in prison and they were in jail. People who were in abusive relationship. People who abused other people. Um, he saved just the vilest. He saved someone who used to serve Satan. Um, I forgot, I think his last name is Ramirez. But I encourage any one of you, go on um, YouTube and, and um, Google or look up, type in CBN testimonies. And you'll see it will all to play and show you different people, different walks of life. People who were poor, people who were wealthy, people who are doing good that have bowed down and come to God and say, Lord, forgive me. And fell in love with him. The key is this. I'll tell anybody. When you give your life to God. Or if you're a Christian. And you decide. Okay. I'm going to get my life together. Get to know God for yourself. Take out of your mind. All those things that you have heard. And believed coming up. And growing up. About who God is. Ask him to reveal himself to you. But most importantly. Make yourself available for him. To show you who he is. Because that has changed my whole thing. That's what caused me, like, even when stuff happened in my life, I didn't get off the boat. I didn't say, Lord, forget you. Because now God is not just somebody I'm reading about in a Bible. I've experienced God personally. How do I explain that? You got to just take my word for it. Trust and believe that Arlene is not just somebody that's going to be, like, <laughs> singing the praises of anything that ain't true. But God is real. Jesus is real the holy spirit is real and that's what makes me get on here and talk about him all the time when you know god you're gonna be so excited about him and if you go and say lord i want to know you i don't want to know what i've been taught and whatever i want to know you help me lord to learn and you're gonna know you know and your sin gets you you get you get desperate enough but why wait for that to happen and when you do that he will begin to reveal himself to you show you who he is god is a friend god is a father he's the best psychologist ever so trust and know that he can change you i'm not no religious fanatic that's i'm just you know just tripping oh she crazy if that's what you think whatever it doesn't matter and another thing too when you get saved he'll let you keep your personality i've always been a little fiery type I'm going to tell you the truth. I'm going to speak clearly to you and let you know where I stand. Guess what? When you become saved, you don't become this little, you know, jelly bag ding dong. Okay? What it is, though, 
he will adjust your temperament <laughs> so that you're delivering his message in love but you'll still be fiery because I am that's not going to change but now he's teaching me how to love people he's teaching me how to understand people but believe me that fire and who I am God is not going to change that in me because that's a part of what makes me who I am and how I deliver his word and that may reach some people that you know it might be I may be for you and you know you may be somebody that needs to listen to you know someone with a Marilyn Hickey uh, type of disposition everybody is different I will be able to witness to some and some others may not but I will be able to reach people probably who's like myself you know what I mean but at the end of it all, what I want to tell you guys, no matter what you're doing, no matter where you are, come on, submit to the Lord. How do you do this? You confess the Lord with, if you believe that Jesus, you have to confess him from your heart, right? So you have to confess that you're a sinner. Lord, I am a sinner. Forgive me for my sins. I've done everything I want to try to do my way. And now I come to you submitting to you. And you just have to believe. I believe that you died on the cross. You came to this earth in human flesh. That you died on the cross. You rode the third day. And you are at the right hand of the Father. Come into my heart. Come into my life. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. I want to be saved and follow you. In Jesus name. And you say that. You don't have to say it in that order. But it is important that you confess that you are a sinner. It is important that you confess that you believe that he came on the earth in human flesh. It is important that you confess that you believe that he died on the cross and that he rose the third day and he's sitting at the right hand of the Father. And you follow him. Now, let's keep in mind, once you become a Christian, everything does not get all easy peasy. Okay, but what it does, it's uh, God will help you through those times. No matter what it is, whether you're a robber, a killer, a murderer, you know, you punched an old lady, that's not a nice thing to do. But do you believe that the Lord still loves you? He does. So get on the bandwagon, guys. Get on it. This earth is temporary. We want everlasting life. Jesus loves you. Jesus loves you. Jesus loves you. Look up Romans 10, chapter 10, verse 9. Look up John 3, 16. And start reading the New Testament. And pray to the Lord that he will help you to find a good church. A church that teaches the word. Now, this is another video. But keep in mind, people must follow the Lord. There's no perfect church. But it shouldn't be a bunch of drama up in there either. Okay? So he'll uh, just allow God. First, let's get to salvation. Let's get to forgiveness for our sins. Right? And then allow the Lord to do the rest for you. He will lead you. He will help you. Get a Bible. Please don't do online Bibles. I think it's okay if that's all you have. But please go and buy a Bible. Because you miss out on so much, man. I'm telling you. Alright? Alright, guys. Have a good day. Bye.